First of all, I would like to wish you all a happy new year. 2022, I can't believe it. How time has flown. Well, let's get on with it. Part two, the May-ish 2020 till September 2021. This almost year and a half period was quite a challenge for a number of reasons. And whilst many problems and roadblocks were encountered, I think things worked out in the end. Well, after a fashion. Darle tiempo al tiempo. It's one of Mama's favourite sayings. It's also something that I repeat to myself quite frequently throughout this period. It means give time to time. It's a saying to accept that everything has its own process, its own independent will, and that sometimes things can't or won't be hurried along by any outside action until the time is right. Okay, this will make sense by the end. So, in January 2020, I had a particular way of working, my way of thinking. You know, I will do this. These are my plans. I choose. If I do this, then that's going to happen. Now, looking back, it was the impatience, rush, and staggering number of assumptions probably sums up my mindset at the beginning of this period. Now, when I read back my diary, it's astounding that what I'd expected the next two years to look like versus the outcome were totally different. But it also shows how much I've changed in the, in the almost two years since that January. I think I almost get a sense of panic in my past actions when I read back my words, especially how I rushed and pressured myself to do as much as possible and as quickly as possible. Was there a simple reason for this panic, this rush to get my license, to buy a bike? Well, I justified it at the time as me wanting to make progress. But now, after a lot of time and much reflection, I realised that this wasn't the case. I, I was actually scared of a number of things, I think. And not having done all that I wanted to, or perhaps even worse, disappointing myself and failing... I had spent so much time with this hung around me, being held back by it, beating myself with it constantly, and I think this had led me failing to progress. Perhaps it all started at home as I recovered. I felt a change or a sudden urgency at many points. The first one I clearly remember was in Marchish, when I told myself... I had lots of time, but suddenly realising that I had fallen back into the routine, I threw myself back into a frantic search, dropping everything else that I was doing to focus on my, on my biking and the world trip again. What hit me was how different my worldview and thinking had changed in seconds, like I was now a different person. I'd slipped back to into the routine, forgetting all my lessons, I'd suddenly been reminded that the world and my existence was a finite resource, and in the great push, like a little child, being shown a giant chocolate cake, and I wanted it all now, now, now. Actually, I probably wanted it beamed straight into my stomach. I didn't want to waste a second of it at all. A few days later, I'd actually swung back and just left everything. And I think this yo-yoing marked much of my year. I'd unintentionally become a swinger. Reading back my diary now, I found myself jumping between the routine and the changes, or in this case biking, I wanted to make. The problem for me is that when your cup is full and you pour more into it, something's going to spill out and it's going to be lost. To do more, something had to go but I couldn't lose or give up anything. So I think this resulted in me developing an us and them mentality, blaming others and feeling increasingly unhappy, um, feeling lost. I just wanted to go out and ride. I decided something and I was trying to make it happen. 
but I saw myself as being held back. I longed to be on my bike and whiz. Well, perhaps nip on a 125 would be apt. But then when I was finally out, I'd feel guilty. And I believed I was being selfish. This was never going to be easy. Covid, the elephant in the room. Covid has simply been a behemoth that's overshadowed our lives for almost two years, impacting all of us in a myriad of different ways, types and scopes. I can't imagine that anyone has been left untouched or unchanged. We all had to adjust to a new reality. It's very difficult when you've just decided to make a change and you've finally got your finger out and try to do something and then you feel like you're being held back. Thing or barriers are placed in your way or things are made more difficult. We all handled it in different ways, some better and some not so great like me. This balancing act is really a reality for all of us. I'm not special or unique, but the differences come in how we handle and understand ourselves. And sometimes this just takes time. With the new normal, we had to get used to having our family, our kids um, around us, changing our style of living and having these new cha and challenges. We all had similar yet unique experiences. A lot of this did play with me when I could ride and couldn't ride. I think also it became a symbol of escape, of freedom, some of that past normality that we were used to. Being on the bike let me leave all the at all of the things happening in the world around and just let me escape for a little while. It took a long time for me to realise how wrong my mentality was. I was used to focusing and completing a task. It just wasn't going to work in this situation. I really felt trapped being at home and I blamed this on the family rather than understanding all the things that were happening in the world and, and accepting the situation. I can remember watching a live cast on Instagram. Anthea's a counsellor and was discussing mental health and biking. There were several interesting comments and at the end I had a lot to think about. Mine's and everyone's 2020 and 2021 had been an extraordinary time. With so many thousands of people had lost their lives, even more were suffering. And I needed to help my loved ones through this difficult time. And that helps me to put it into perspective what exactly we have been through. Biking may have given me hope and so much more, but at times when, as a responsible person, family has to just come first. And that was okay. I just had to keep trying and it would happen eventually, right? I had tried to book tests so many times. It had just been impossible. Everything was booked solid. When there was a last minute cancellation, the school was unable to accommodate me, but I couldn't plan forward. So it was really a catch-22. Once, when I finally ended up booking a test, my carpal tunnel flared up during a lesson. On the, it was actually the day before, um, leaving me unable to ride. It was so bad when I got home, I couldn't even put the key in the door. Another time I had a near miss, um, hours before my test, and later I fell, injuring myself. Other times, Covid restrictions saw my number of attempts cancelled, again. To paraphrase one of my favourite comedians, Rodney Dangerfield, I get no luck, I get no luck at all! Okay, that was terrible. I won't do that again. This saw my hope and enthusiasm shattered every time I would fail. And I just had to start again from scratch after a long break to build my riding back up, to get myself back up after maybe a month or even longer without having touched a bike. Rudyard, my old friend, would come out and after reading If a few times, I'd just have a coconut smile and get on with it. By the end of the summer, I realised something quite obvious that had been staring me in the face. I had been making myself miserable trying to pass. I had been trying to force something and have control of in a world where everything was unpredictable and where there was a new norm. 
tiempo al tiempo. I pondered it for quite a while. I had to be in the present and be ready to accept whatever's going to happen. Things would come to me in time. The cycle had gone on for almost 18 months, creating expectation only to breed disappointment and then disillusionment. I just had to try something new. The trip. The something new was focusing on a journey, not the destination. Well, I wanted to pass so I could take trips, but why couldn't I actually take any journeys or do the things that I wanted on my 125 that I had in my hand? I decided that after another cancelled test, I would attempt a Land's End to John O'Groats in two parts. As I couldn't get the time off all in one go, I had never ridden actually at this point more than 70 miles on donkey in one go. So to do the 350 miles to the bed and breakfast um, from the peaks um, on the first day was going to be daunting. Well, I'll leave more for the video on the trip, but after coming back, I really felt a newfound confidence. But after 18 months with L plates, I was ready to move on. I'd had enough of my L for limited plate. I was feeling it as a stigma. It was L for a loser because I couldn't pass. L for lazy because I just didn't get my finger out and I just couldn't get to the next part. That red plate irked me every single time I saw it and really having a difficult time. I decided that I'd have enough riding under my belt, I had a new confidence in myself and my next aim was a test. Well, with so many months waiting list, it really didn't look too promising. But what was going to happen was going to happen. I just had to flow with it. All I could do was try. But in that moment, I did give up. I didn't care anymore. I had bigger fish to fry. I had a life to get on with. I genuinely let go, stood back and took a deep breath. And I said, you know what? If I'm on a CBT for another year, it's fine. I'll eventually pass. But passing and failing are going to happen in their own time. As I had been repeating to myself so many times, darle tiempo al tiempo weón. And this is where everything changed. <laughs>